we're going to play Jeopardy. And we're going to <laughs> review and kind of compare and contrast two different programs that both intersect in the area of safety in the workplace. Brief overview. OSHA stands for two different things, the Occupational Safety and Health Act, which is a federal act enacted by Congress around 1970, 71, and I know I have some experts out here, so you can correct me later over a drink. Um, and uh, there's also stands for the Occupational Safety Health Administration. The administration, from a federal perspective, enforces the Occupational Safety Health Act. I would note OSHA generally is a federal program, but there are state-run programs. Congress allowed states to run their own program as long as it is in line with the federal standards. For example, Michigan, MIOSH is a state-run program. And a VSSR, that is short for violation of a specific safety requirement. Uh, we've had this provision in the Ohio Constitution since 1924. OSHA came into being in 1970. So the state of Ohio has been um, involved in safety in connection with workplace injuries for a long time. Uh, the provision is administered by the Bureau and the Industrial Commission makes the determinations on applications for additional monies for violations of specific safety requirements. So we have two different systems administered by two different governmental entities, the federal government and the state, but the purpose of both is to assure safe workplaces for employees in this country. Great. Now. So, go ahead. Go ahead, I insist. We need two Oh, let's go. Come on. Right, it's Somebody. not that difficult. Okay, we've got one. Great. We have two. We have two? Yes. All right. And yes. Yes. Come on. Come on up. No, that's the wrong show. Um, you will be up here. That's your buzzer right there. That's your. Right? All you have to do okay. is speak there, press the button. So let me just briefly go over the rules, okay? If you look at the board, there are four columns, liability, investigations, defenses, and compensation. You will pick a square, just like they do on Jeopardy, and there will be a clue. And there's no time limit. If you want to hit your buzzer before you even see the clue, that's fine. <laughs> but if you lose or you don't know the answer, then uh, your dollar amount is reduced. A correct answer, obviously, wins the amount of money on the square, okay. right? The, it is in two formats. I think three of the columns are just VSSR or OSHA. So there'll be a clue, and then the answer has to be one or the other. So you have a pretty good probability of getting it right. <laughs> good luck. <laughs> well, no. And then... And then one column, you actually have to uh, answer the clue. So that's a little more difficult, but I'm sure for you two, you'll, you will have no problem. Uh, what else do I need to say here? Oh, no daily double, no final jeopardy. And uh, we add up the points, and at the end, whoever has the most points wins a prize. All right. Is there anything else, Carrie, that I forgot? OK, we're all ready to go. Uh, Carl, you're going to ask a, uh, a question to determine who picks first, correct? Correct. All right. The correct answer to this question determines who gets to go first and get the advantage. What's the name of our employee whose wife is having a baby? Yes. Joe. Oh, Joe, wow. correct. Good job. Good job. Wow. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You okay. Get to pick a category. So pick a category. We'll go liability for a hundred. Liability for a hundred. Okay. The clue is an employee was exposed to a hazard. Oh, Correct. Correct. 
Interesting, in OSHA, you only need the exposure. You don't need an injury. And there is uh, not a similar uh, requirement under the VSSR provision in Ohio. You need an injury, and uh, exposure is not enough to uh, constitute a VSSR in Ohio. Liability for 200. Okay. A violation of a, an applicable specific requirement. Is that OSHA or VSSR? OSHA. Correct. What is OSHA? <laughs> I forgot to <laughs> I forgot to read one rule here. And it said It says you do not have to answer in question format. But but you may. All right? So your answer is what is What's OSHA? OSHA. So it was VSSR. Yeah, it was VSSR, that's wrong. Okay. VSSR, violation of a specific safety requirement. Specificity in the safety requirement is critical in a VSSR application. Uh, the case law is absolutely clear that the requirement must be specific so that the employer knows precisely how to comply with the requirement. So the requirements talk about distances above the uh, ground, when a uh, lanyard or safety harness is required. Uh, they talk about uh, specific types of guarding for specific machines. So if a requirement is not specific and does not put an employer on notice exactly how to comply, there is no basis for a VSSR. And many of the requirements that have been adopted uh, over the various industries have been found by courts not to be specific and therefore denying the VSSR because the employer was given a choice how to comply. Uh, the employer has to be told specifically how to comply. Carl, is there such, a, such an animal in OSHA? Not really. There's, it blends a little bit. You need some specificity in the regulation so the employer knows what they're supposed to do, but nowhere near like a VSSR. We forgot to ask the contestants to briefly introduce themselves. Oh, we did? Yeah. Yeah. What are we doing? <laughs> Let's just right. do it. You just state your name. And where are you? My name is Angela. I'm with American Trim out of Sydney, Ohio. Great. Okay. I'm Amy Brinkman. I'm with um, Whirlpool out of Marion. Okay. Very good. Okay, and who, who got the last one? That, no I one. missed it, right? You so. missed it. So that's still me. Still you. I'm not familiar with the rules of Jeopardy. <laughs> um, we'll go investigations 100. Okay. And the clue is? Scheduled on-site inspection. OSHA. Wrong. Yes. It's VSSR. When the Bureau begins to invest... <laughs> <laughs> when the Bureau begins to investigate a VSSR, uh, they gather documents. The employer puts together a packet of information and gives it to the investigator. The investigator then contacts the attorney or the employer directly if there's no counsel involved, and an investigation on site is conducted, uh, prearranged. The employer knows when that's going to be. The investigation is very limited, uh, only to the particular piece of equipment and particular machinery involved in the accident. So it is a very, again, specific investigation, uh, and there is notice, and there are no surprises. You're going to know when the investigator is coming and really what the investigator is going to do. Oh, contraire on OSHA. Mm. You do not know when they're coming. In fact, if somebody from OSHA tells the employer that they're coming out for an inspection, that's bad because that employee can be subject to some criminal liability. So the employer doesn't know when they're coming out. OSHA can come in and look at anything, anything, not just one employee. If somebody loses a hand or whatever, 
they may look at that machine, but then they can look at anything else, including your records. So difference, big difference there. Okay. All right. I'll like defenses one hundred for one hundred, please. Okay. Is that me? This is OSHA or VSSR, unavoidable employee misconduct. OSHA. Correct. Correct. You get one hundred dollars yes. for that. Of course, I don't know whether you're in the negative now. or the positive right now. <laughs> but this is the most common defense. Uh, it's an affirmative defense and employers can use. There are some elements that are very important on this. Probably blends a little bit with uh, VSSR. You have to have well-known policies, safety policies. You have to train on those policies. It all must be documented. The employee must be aware of it, and your supervisors can't be participating in what the employee is doing incorrectly. So if you have a renegade employee, an isolated incident, the employee fails to follow your well-known policies, that is your defense. And OSHA will buy it. They don't like it, but they'll buy it. And likewise, there is a similar defense under the Ohio uh, VSSR law that has been developed in the courts. It's called unilateral negligence. And if the employer complies with the particular requirement, does everything right, puts the proper guard on, and the employee takes it upon him or herself to bypass the guard or remove the guard without the employer's knowledge and is injured, that is a defense to that VSSR claim. Unilateral negligence on behalf of the employee, but the key is the employer must have complied in the first place. And just a caveat, once the employer has knowledge of it, uh, it better not happen again because you only get one bite at the apple. So if, if it's the first time um, it happens, the employer is probably not going to be all held liable. But if it's the second or third, uh, there may be other claims beyond the VSSR against that employer. Very good. All right, I'll take defenses for 200. Defenses for 200. Question, and the answer is either OSHA or VSSR. Lack of authority or control to correct a hazard. What is OSHA? No. No, dang. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That is VSSR. That is a defense under the uh, uh, state law. And the, the, the whole concept is if we are going to penalize an employer for violating a specific safety requirement, the employer better have the authority to alter or correct or maintain the piece of equipment or the uh, forklift or whatever whatever the situation is. So in the, you know, the temporary employment situation, if you've got an employee uh, of a temporary agency working at a customer company and there is an injury, that temporary agency will not be uh, liable for a VSSR because that temporary agency, in most cases, would have no authority over altering, correcting a, a safety problem with a piece of machinery. That responsibility and that authority lies with the customer company. Likewise, I had a case years ago where our client rented scaffolding to do a rather large project in Columbus, Ohio. And the, the lease agreement prevented our client from uh, erecting or taking down or doing really anything with the scaffolding. They rented it from this large scaffolding uh, firm. And unfortunately, somebody fell and there was a serious injury. And the defense was we had no authority, we had no control over the scaffolding setup or adjusting it or anything else. We filed the lease agreement and that was enough for the commission to deny that BSSR. So authority to alter and correct the piece of equipment is critical. If you don't have it, it's a complete defense to a VSSR. Yeah, that, that was a bit of a trick question. We kind of designed these questions that not necessarily easy to answer, but most, much of what Greg said would apply 
uh, to OSHA as far as the staffing company not having control over the safety hazard. Um, but I'll leave it at that. All right, fair enough. I think you get to choose. Oh, defenses for 300. Defenses, 300. The citation was too general. BSSR. Could be either one. That's another trick, trick question. <laughs> We're going to say OSHA. <laughs> well, you know, there are rules, Carl. You're either right or you're wrong. But you know me. I Come don't on. like rules. No, you're so. screwing the game up. <laughs> you're wrong. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, man. That's funny. Uh, yeah, the, this, um, the citation was too general. They, this is another affirmative defense in OSHA that um, courts don't like necessarily, and you don't see it very often. But similar to BSSRs, the, the regulation must be specific enough to tell the employer what to do. The citation may or may not be applicable to that particular regulation. So it's sort of a blend. Um, I know that you have that all the time in yeah, BSSRs. You're talking, I do, but you, that has to do with the violation. You're talking about the citation itself and what is on the citation? Yeah, it's, it's both. Okay. The citation has to be applicable to the regulation. Right. But the way we worded this, I think it was kind of interesting. The vi yeah. But when someone files a VSSR claim, they have to cite the specific code section, the specific safety requirement that they allege was violated. That is on their VSSR application. And the commission will only investigate what is cited. So in a sense, it's uh, correct. So I, uh, you have got the rules, Greg. I, you do have the rules. Um, <laughs> so, so the whole VSSR investigation is, follows from the uh, application, and the application has to cite to a specific requirement or requirements. And a lot of times, uh, plaintiffs' counsel they just you know throw everything. Uh, on that application because they really don't know what requirement would apply to the particular machine. So in that sense, there is some specificity requirement. Right. Yeah. Next. Um, compensation for 100. Okay, now this is an open-ended question. Now they get a little more difficult. Okay. The company could be required to pay 15 to 50 percent of the... VSSR. That's correct. Okay, has to do with the VSSR award. If the Industrial Commission finds that the employer has violated a specific safety requirement, and if the commission finds that that violation caused the particular injury or death or disease, then the Industrial Commission has broad discretion as to how much money to award the claimant. And that discretion is 15 to 50% of the maximum rate of compensation payable for the year of injury. Remember, maximum rate, not what the claimant receives. Uh, it would be the maximum rate. And I have seen many VSSR awards where the VSSR award is more than the temporary total compensation rate that the individual is receiving. And the whole purpose is that if an employer is a low paying employer as far as wages go, they do not benefit on a VSSR situation. So maximum rate of compensation for year of injury. They can get very expensive and paid directly by the employer. Compensation 200. This is the maximum OSHA penalty. <laughs> I want to say VSSR because it maximizes everything. Well, this is an open-ended question. Dollar amount. Oh, there was a specific amount. Oh How didn't you not know that? <laughs> yes, this is the maximum penalty, and it changes every year now. It goes up every year. I think it was in 2016 or thereabouts, Congress changed the way the penalties um, are calculated, and they went up 80% in one year, 
and now they increase periodically based upon some factor. So that's just one citation. Note that OSHA fines are not based on compensation because you don't even need an injury. So injuries are relevant. Okay. Compensation oh. 300. Let's okay. Do, get it over with. Huh? The clue is a VSSR award is payable for this long. What is lifetime? That's <laughs> correct. That's correct. Wow. Good <laughs> maker, <laughs> Kane, bud. <laughs> now, wait a minute here. <laughs> I'm almost even. <laughs> VSSR awards are payable as long as the claim is open, and many claims are open for years and years and years. Uh, state fund employers, obviously, a claim goes out of your experience after a period of time, around five years. Uh, you continue to pay life of the claim, the VSSR penalty. Oh. Euro pays it and bills you dollar for dollar. I'll take compensation for 500. Okay. The clue is OSHA can impose a penalty of $12,934 per day for this. Um, I want to say not reporting, like if they have an injury. No. No. But it was a good. It was a good shot. Okay. Uh, the, I don't have any. The answer. actual answer <laughs> is <laughs> failure to abate the hazard. So let's just use an example. You've been cited by OSHA. You go to the informal conference. You decide to settle uh, for ten thousand dollars, and the abatement date is April the thirteenth. No, let's say April the twelfth. And by April the 12th, you have not fixed the hazard. You're exposed to that maximum amount every day after that abatement date until you fix it. So. I second guess myself. <laughs> <laughs> and under Ohio, the Industrial Commission, as of 1986, has the power to order abatement. If they have a VSSR claim in front of them, and they see a violation, the commission can order the employer to correct it. Even if there's no injury involved, and even if the underlying VSSR claim is denied, the commission can order correction. And if the employer does not correct, that is deemed a second violation. And why is that important? Because two violations within a 24-month period can result in a $50,000 fine payable to the Bureau of Workers' Compensation, Safety, and Hygiene. I'll right. take defenses for 500. Trying to catch up. The answer is either OSHA or VSSR. Failure of safety device. Go ahead. I'm going to say OSHA. No. No. <laughs> VSSR. Um, You've got a safety device, you've got brakes on your forklift, you have uh, pullback guards on your punch press, you have, uh, you have the guy in a lanyard and a lifeline, and the safety device fails. And, the, and there's an accident and there's an injury, and the employer says, look, I complied. The safety device failed. Again, if it's the first failure and there's no knowledge of any problem with the safety device, the employer is off the hook out of VSSR. If it's the second or third or fourth and the employer had knowledge, that is not a defense. That was a tough question. But <laughs> before we go on, I'm going to solicit from the brain power at this table. Which one? Over here. Oh, the safety okay. people, is there a defense in OSHA for the failure of a safety device? Yeah, 
it's not a real easy argument and it's not a formal defense, but it is an argument you can make when you're trying to. I want to encourage you. Okay. <laughs> if I'm going to lose, I'm going to lose big. She better be quick on the buzzer. Okay. <laughs> Oh. Aren't you should give you half points? Yes. Real quick for the for the audience, thank you, Tybo. The the uh, answer solicited from the safety table over here is that you can develop that argument that it was a failure of a safety device and you blurred it everything correct during your investigation. You want to try to blend it towards human failure as much as possible. The one thing that I will say, OSHA does not, the OSHA law is not strict liability. The employers are not strictly liable just because somebody got hurt. That's the basis. It doesn't seem like that when you're dealing with them, but that's, that's the basis. Okay, Good. next. Next. Investigations for 500. We're gonna go big. Whoa. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. And the clue is employer required reporting. OSHA. Yes. Yes. There you go. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> Yes, there are very uh, specific reasons and causes that will require employers to report affirmatively to contact OSHA and report an injury. Uh, amputations, loss of an eye, uh, death of course, hospitalization, and it gets kind of detailed and there are nuances to all of that. But OSHA requires an affirmative duty to report. Is there anything like that? No reporting requirements for uh, VSSR. Okay, thank you. Liability 500. Well, we're getting to it. Okay, the clue is the violation is the proximate cause of the injury. Yes. VSSR. Correct. Correct. I'm out of the hole now. <laughs> just saying, just saying. We got two minutes, Carl, so we got to okay. move. Right. Okay, so. Uh, if there's no injury caused by a violation, there's no BSSR award. So you can violate as many, not that I would recommend it, you can violate as many safety requirements as you choose as long as nobody gets hurt as a result of that. Uh, but if, this, if the safety violation is the cause of the injury, uh, you're liable. If it is not, if there's some other cause and it didn't factor into the accident, uh, that is a defense. You have nothing like that. No, sure, you don't need an injury. Okay. Liability for 300. Okay, the clue. The employer, okay, the employer knew or should have known about the hazard. Um, we're going to go uh, with BSSR. That's what I was going to say. Wrong. 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 You're wrong. Oh, I'm wrong. glad you got it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sure, real quick. The uh, general duty cause requires employers to inspect their work site, provide a workplace free of recognized hazards. Recognized also means something you should have known through due diligence. Oop. Next. Uh, investigations for 300. All right, OSHA or VSSR, record hearing. I think VSSR. Correct. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> The employer or the claimant has the right to request a record hearing when the merits of a VSSR are heard. Uh, if a record hearing is requested, and I always recommend that one be requested, then the parties have the right to submit additional evidence beyond the investigation report, present testimony of witnesses, everything's recorded, you've got a nice record, and the only way you can challenge a VSSR award is through mandamus in the Court of Appeals, and so oftentimes it's good to have a complete record of the testimony if in fact some hearing officer got off track and awarded a, a VSSR where there was no basis for it. Well, I think we need to move on even though we have one. One more. Yeah, we do need to move on. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, let's thank the contestants. Who <laughs> won? And we have prizes. What, do, what, yeah, what were the results here? Okay. Angela, Amy, oh, Amy wins. <laughs> yeah. So, and thank you very much for participating. Yeah, thank you. Done? Like, we're done. Yep. Yep.